So I did something. Something that I don't normally do. I ordered from Timu, and uh, I'm a little skeptical about it, but I'm gonna show you something, tell you some pros and cons of it, and then we're actually gonna open the order. And uh, yeah, we'll just go into it. So let's get into it. Okay, so starting up, here's here's what my order looks like. Um, this is the first one. So you got some braids, some jig heads, a reel, a popper, a bunch of different swim baits. This all was like super cheap. Like, don't get me wrong, they got that right. It's, it's super cheap. I think all that was like maybe a hundred bucks. The timing, it did come in the time frame. It said it came on July 2nd, and that's the exact time frame they said so just be aware you're gonna get spammed especially if you sign up to keep up to date with your order now there's one thing I have opened that came early this came early it was delivered by DHL it was one of the rods so let me go get that rod for you nine foot was supposed to be a spinning reel rod you can't tell it is a casting rod nine foot I has to be light is flexible as that is nine foot I thought it was gonna be a spinning one that's why I opted for nine foot because I was like light spinning it's two piece, but it does feel pretty quality, honestly. I will say that. So far, so good, I guess. So, here's the box, or the bag, I should say. <laughs> you can kind of hear it. Gee, yeah, just basically tracking and shipping information. Oh, geez. So, that's the first one out. Here's a big carp swim bait. And, hmm, let's see. Use my teeth like an animal. I mean, okay, I will say on the picture it probably did look a little bit better, but honestly, this isn't this isn't that terrible. I mean, <laughs> there's like loose bearings inside. It's got some weight to it. I don't know, I mean, it feels solid, but I'm just wondering how it's gonna do in the water, especially because this is a hard plastic. Oh my gosh, what? I'm getting paint off on my hand. I don't know if that was from the bag or this lure. The hooks are really sharp. They feel really solid. But yeah, that's swim bait number one. Okay, here is an open pack of Ned heads. Actually, these are kind of cool. I don't know if you can see that, but they got like a black flake up there, like a sparkly black flake. But, uh, I mean, for like, I think 88 cents a pack or something like that. So far, not too bad. All right, another swim bait. I think this is another carp style one. The color just on the back says blue. So this one, this one's nice, nice. If you can see in the bottom, there's more weights or whatever to keep it down. Rubber tail here, double, so, so I guess it's considered more glide bait, just a split joint or whatever. And the hooks are, they're super sticky hook. Actually, this one's pretty quality, not even gonna lie. I'd fish this, it's big, but I don't know. It's more like a, I guess another like a carp type deal. Huh, this one's pretty nice. Here we go, here we go. This is a good one. So this is one of the uh, rip ops of the, uh, I believe they're called S Waver River to Sea Glide Baits. This is a trout pattern one. Okay, I've been seeing this one on the side, so. Wow, this one looks really nice. Look, huh? it's got all these instructions on the back and stuff. Yeah, look at that, it's got like a uh, reflector bar on the inside of it. Oh wow, this is like, you can see the, all the insides of this and everything. So rubber tail again, which I like. Um, inside is like a razor blade or something suspended by a spring, if you can see that. And it just flash, it just jiggles around with this real light spring and flashes. And I'm not really sure what this one's supposed to be a rip off of, but look at the way it's jointed that. See if you can see it move there. I don't usually see joints like that. I don't know, I don't know how to feel about that. I think it's supposed to be a blue back pa pattern, but <laughs> it goes blue purple. I don't know if that's on purpose <laughs> or if this is just how this one got made. I don't know. But overall, I mean, it does seem okay. It seems like, it looks like it fish. I mean, I don't know how often that's gonna become a problem. Your fish is gimping through the water, jammed up like that. I don't know, I guess you'd be going for a blue back herring style with this for sure. I mean, obviously with the blue and then purple can kind of pass for a blue back herring too. I don't know if it's supposed to be multicolored. I uh, ordered a popper. I just didn't realize how small the popper was. Yeah, that is, that is a micro freaking popper. I was actually pretty excited about the popper too. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Look at this little thing. Look at the little baby trebles. This thing is the size of my thumb. This is the smallest popper I've ever seen in my life. This has to be for trout, but with trout wants a popper. I don't know, maybe. Maybe they all like poppers. I don't know. I've never fished for trout on popper, but I guess I am now. I was really excited for this popper too. I was like, man, that looks cool. <laughs> no. Starting with this line. This is just this 500 millimeter super strong fishing line. And this weird green pattern. That is really a light line. I don't even know what you'd call that. Well, I mean, actually, yeah, that is pretty tough. Huh. 
If I knew what 500M translated to. Um, DK Fishing Reel. This is a DKI I 2000. And I don't know if it's the spinning or yet yeah, it's the spinning. Okay. Set that there for the time. Open this guy. What on earth? Look, it's got this massive oversized handle. For reference, I want you to look at that. This is my Daiwa musky setup, the Pro Pro Rex or whatever. Where is it? <laughs> well, I mean, you can see. Look at the the top and everything. The spindle. This is supposed to be for a smaller size. I mean, it feels smooth enough. I mean, I don't really like how the handle feels in my hand. It's kind of rough. So the box looks cool. Pro Robo Bo Bo Pro. I don't know. I don't know. It looks cool though. So right, left. It's marked as a right. Thank gosh. Because if it was a left-handed thing, I was gonna chunk this out in the street. <laughs> so that's. I mean, so far it seems like it's fairly decent quality. Didn't really tell you. This is a pretty fast ratio from what I remember too. Look at this. That's your spool right there. Look at that. You have like, you carry a 200 foot of line on this bad boy. <laughs> what on earth is this? Thing? Well, we're gonna put it on that nine foot width. I don't know, probably this 12 foot line. <laughs> See what it does. Do some casts on it and stuff. That's pretty much it for the unboxing. I we're going down to uh, the local lake here for uh, to test out some of these Timu lures and to uh, bass fish a little bit. Ooh. Goose. All right, so first things first, we're gonna test out. This was the most expensive one that I bought. I think it was like $10. Swim bait, I got it on the Pro Rex set up with a steel leader. Hopefully we won't lose this out here because this is the most decent looking one, but it was also the most expensive one. Lane right there has got on the uh, little DFS author messing around with it on some of that. And this is not Kiwi Ray, this is, I don't know, the 80 pound Ray. This is my boss. It's a BFS popper, bait fishing finesse. Um, it's only like two inches. It was I thought it was supposed to be bigger, but hey, it's Timo, so what do you know? It's also some uh, BFS line. It's rated for 1.7 pounds, I think. But if you pull on this stuff, it takes at least 10 pounds of force to break it. So it's, it's pretty serious stuff so far. Um, but we're just, I'm just gonna cast it out. Well, when I stay over here, I'll show you how to work this. Come back over here. Assess the damage here, if there's any. Tail's kind of warped up a little bit. That, that tends to happen with these uh, feather flash tails, anything like this. Uh, I'm not seeing any chipping. Everything seems to look okay. Rattle's still okay. Feels like there might be a little bit of water in it, but I'm, I'm not at 100%. If you look there, it's actually got pretty good movement on water. I got four of these. I didn't realize they were this big. And unfortunately, since they're so big, I don't ever see them. You can come from But well, this is a carp pattern. Well, there's a lot of carp in here. There's a lot of bass in here, too. So. But it's got pretty good roots in the water. It's going to the point. You can see it, the water like a uh, camera. Holy crud, that went down. Heavy, so it's gonna be dragging the bottom. I'm gonna reel, reel, reel. I'm not afraid it's gonna happen. I think they may have got it, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's gonna have to like burn this way through here. So let's check it out after one step. Not seeing any major damage. Knocks and everything looks fine. It's on a steel leader, so I mean, it's gonna take a lot for it to get stuck out there. Oh, uh, hook spent out immediately. 
not really good quality hooks. Granted, you can always change the treble hooks out, so let's just see how the body holds up for a few more casts. <laughs> well, <laughs> if that didn't test it, I don't know what will. I just smacked the side of the foundation on the ammo there, so. There's like zero chance of getting anything off this because I'm going to have to burn it through the water so fast. Not to mention it heated up really quick. It didn't feel like it was supposed to be I see this one pulling up. So you've seen how it arrives, how it looks coming out of the packaging, just everything that leads to this point. You saw us fish them, and uh, this is pretty much just the, the end, the wrap up. So um, looking back at this one, a bit more damage than I thought, a lot of scuffs up and around here, but still not terrible. Um, there is like, you can see there was water in it. It was out in my car for about two hours before I got my stuff and was able to do this segment right here. And it's been, it's very hot today, so it could have easily dried up a lot more of what was in there. But I thought, whenever I was reeling it in, I thought I felt it get a little heavier. So I was correct on that. It definitely filled up with water a little bit. Now, I don't know how big of a deal that is on a swim bait like this. It's supposed to be a slow sink. And honestly, it kind of might help anything if you're wanting it to sink a little bit faster. I mean, other than that, this one was this one's, was the most solid bait out there that we tested. Its hooks are still very sharp, and it got ran through the rocks like crazy. Other than the scuffs up front, it's, it's pretty solid. Tail's good to go nothing broken for the price this was i'm gonna double check and i'll throw the price up right here for the next up we'll pop over here to the spinning so first thing that strikes me is the the uh the line change colors it was like this mossy green color and now it's like a dark burgundy brown which is not really a bad color anyway um not seeing any frays in it or anything like that however this i think this is a type of fluorocarbon or a mono it did not have it listed so really couldn't tell you this little popper is just I mean it's fine it does what it what this exactly rips off I don't know a company that makes poppers this small I'm sure there is and if you know let me know down in the comments leave who this is ripping off because I really don't know there's some chipping around up here other than that nothing really paints good hooks are good this got jammed up a few times it got pulled out so no hooks bent out I mean just for a little tiny lure it's not bad and uh, as I'm feeling the line right here, I can feel some, I can feel a little, little, I wouldn't, I don't know if you'd say damage or scuffs, but you can definitely feel a difference. Just for curiosity purposes, let's just see. Let's just see how, oh yeah, that broke with ease. <laughs> okay, so maybe not the best line ever, but it held up better than I thought it would. Yeah, let me see if I can break it again. Yeah, so right, it broke right where those scuffs were at. So once it gets frayed like that, it seems like it's done. Um, as for the reel itself, the reel itself, no problems. It got casted several times. We were out there for about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. And the reel, no problems out of it. I'll go and grab a casting setup that I bought as well, and I'll show it to you. It didn't even make it to the water tests. So for the the price of this reel, I'll have to, I'll, again, I'll list it right here. I would say it was worth it, especially if you're a beginner getting set up. There's some damage around it where it's been dropped on the ground and stuff, because we had to torture test a little bit. But I mean, other than that, I mean, it's, it's solid, it's fine. But the only thing I don't like about it is the big Predator handle on a 2500 series reel, pardon me. It's just overkill on it, honestly. I mean, yeah, it might help for people that have struggled handling it. I personally don't like it. This one, I would not. I wouldn't even bother with it's just it's clunky it's heavy it sinks it does have good action but the hooks i mean look look at that hook that is just bent out that is and that was like a first little hink i was just pulling on it a little bit granted i'm hooked up here to a steel 50 pound steel leader to 80 pound braid it's going to take a lot to get something to get this thing to pop off still at the same time i wouldn't have expected such large trebles like that to bend out especially if this one got stuck worse and didn't bend out at all. Paint job and everything's fairly okay. I, this is the side that has a lot of grapes and stuff. I did smack this thing pretty solid right into the wall of the dam down there and it didn't crack or anything. So, I mean, the body is solid. It really is. Oh, never mind. Scratch that, scratch that. Let me get this unhooked. Okay, so I didn't actually see this, but until I was just looking it over that last time, there's a crack right there. And that's a, not a good spot. That's a detrimental place to have a crack at because your uh, out, I guess, the, the spot where the hook, the split ring hooks to for that. So if that cracks, that's gonna send this, you're gonna lose your back treble and it's pretty much 
pointless to fish it. Yeah, just make sure it ain't no algae or anything. No, that's crack. I mean, overall, still for getting the crap beat out of it, I would have, ex I honestly expected it to be busted into a thousand pieces once it hit the damn wall, but I feel like I could break it right here, but I probably wind up with trebles in my hands. I doubt I'll ever fish this again. I mean, maybe for musky or something, but I'm definitely gonna have to change out these hooks because if that tug could pull it, bend that out. A big musky could obviously bend that out. Obviously, this is not anything Timu. This is a Bass Pro Shop Graphite Series with a loose speed spool, but we're actually going up here to look because this is that 14 pound, I believe, 12 pound Timu braid, something like that. It's got a little six cents um, square bill on here. I cast this out several times. My little, it was mostly my younger brother using this one. Um, but look, that's a, that's a lot of fray right there. And the shaky head one looks almost exactly the same. And I, you know, I'm not an idiot. I know when you're fishing rocks, you're gonna get a lot of freight like this, but it makes me wonder how durable this is now. I mean, it's, I'm giving it a pretty good tug, but I just don't like to see freight like that. Let me compare it to uh, the 80 pound braid. I know it's not a good example comparing 80 to 12 or 14, whatever it is. Yeah, there's, if you can see the, the 80 pound, there's, there's nothing on the 80 pound. I think it simply comes down to guys, you get what you pay for. That's a good motto in life. I said it, I've said it at the beginning of this. I said it, I'm saying it now. You get what you pay for. This one is kind of the exception because it's almost like halfway decent. <laughs> Everything else has not been that great. Because I got a casting rod and a casting reel. Never even made it to the water. This is uh, the remnants of it. I didn't even bother. There was so much line on this thing. And I had to reline this thing several, several times. The reel was, you can kind of see because there's still some of it left. Every time, no matter what pound line, what size line you put on this thing, this is just more of that braid that came because I didn't want to waste any of my actual decent line. Um, this thing would feed up into the cracks where the spool meets the sides, if you can see that right, and jam it up and cause god awful bird's nests and knots that would go back inside of the, the real body here. I don't know, I, would, I had to fix it several times and then the last time I went to do it, cast this thing, it wound up doing it, backlashed so hard that it snapped this flimsy little rod in two at a weird spot, like right up here just above that. Like it left all this line out, I was just furious at this point so I just rolled it up in this like massacre ball like this I'm gonna rip this Guggen jig off I was just using I was just using this to chunk out in the yard but this didn't even make it to the water I was trying to dial it in and yeah it's like the handles kind of bent too but that could just be for me wrapping it around right here I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I might keep it on the shelf as a reminder as, as oh, you get what you pay for but like if you're an advanced fisherman you're probably not looking on Timu much unless you're curious like I was like a lot of people have been so that I feel like Timu is going to attract more newer people that are looking to get a bargain to hop into whatever type of fishing you're getting into if you're watching this one, it's probably bass fishing maybe musky fishing just don't think it's good in the long run and because it's just not quality stuff I mean that was barely enter effort to that. Don't waste your money on Timu. That's been my in-depth look at it, and that's my honest opinion, is don't waste your money on it. If you're wanting to like seriously fish, get out on the water, catch fish, and get more time on the water, you don't want to use Timu stuff. Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you really want. I'm really trying to uh, pump content out here lately. Check out my shorts. I do shorts daily. Um, I do bait uh, kind of show-offs. I do fishing shorts, obviously informational shorts, tactics, stuff like that, but see you guys.